ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, Mystery Fireball over Scotland and Race to Save Baby Puffins. But first, one of the biggest moments in cryptocurrency history has finally come to pass. Yes, Ethereum blockchain has finished its much-anticipated merge to a more eco-friendly platform. In essence, it now means the amount of energy needed to create Ether tokens is 99% less after it dropped the need for highly power-intensive Bitcoin-style mining techniques. But all this really didn't do much for the value of Ether, with one a token dropping by over half a percent on the dollar after markets opened. Now... There have been more than 200 reports of a mysterious fireball crossing the night sky over Scotland and Northern Ireland. The UK Meteor Network says it is investigating to ascertain what the object was, meteor or space debris, adding that most reports had come from Scotland and Northern Ireland. Steve Owens, an astronomer at the Glasgow Science Centre, says it's possible that the entity could have landed, but it's highly unlikely who have made ground in Scotland. Next. If you did not get a good night's sleep last night, while well, a study is linking artificial blue light from LEDs and a restless kip. Using images of Earth taken by the International Space Station, researchers from the University of Exeter say the newer lights, which replace older sodium ones, are actually causing substantial biological impacts in continental Europe and Britain. The study says that blue light radiation from LEDs risks suppressing melatonin, the hormone that regulates sleep patterns in humans and other organisms. The study says blue light can also alter the behavioural patterns of animals, including bats and moths, as it can change their movements towards or away from light sources. Now, have you heard of a puffling? If you don't know, it's a baby puffin. But in a town called Hamai, in the Westman Islands off Iceland's south coast, it's what's known as puffling season. The little grey and white birds need help when it comes to flying the nest. They end up just, you know, kind of crashing into the town near the harbour and in the residential street, you know, on the local golf course and things like that. They are so small that they can't take off from the ground. The locals are just, you know, out and about picking up puffins. You see people walking around with boxes. Can you open the trunk? Which box did he go in? Wait, do we have more than 10? I have no idea. Kayana Sue Powers is an American content creator living in Iceland and sitting under the northern lights. She spoke to us from her car while waiting for the late night spectacle to take place. A volcano erupted here on the island where everyone lives 50 years ago. The country was evacuated and then they came back and now there's just more island. Like the island is even bigger. The puffins end up falling out of their burrows into the town because usually there's just ocean under cliffs and they confuse the like lights in the town with the moon. The townspeople try their best to save as many pufflings as possible, otherwise they risk becoming prey for town cats and other animals. All puffins residents manage to gather up are released safely at sunrise. Everyone brings their pufflings to a spot on the south coast of the island and they throw their pufflings out to the sea. Once they hit the air, the puffins can start flying and they just fly out to the ocean. It's really amazing. They are all just going any direction they want. Oh my god! Patient confidentiality for medical records is a big concern for everyone. So what could possibly go wrong with a digital mask? It's claimed helps protect privacy. Scientists reckon they've developed a way to allow facial images to be stored in medical records, while apparently preventing potentially sensitive personal biometric information from being extracted and shared. Researchers in China and Cambridge apparently coded 3D reconstructions and deep learning algorithms, that's a branch of AI, to erase identifiable features from facial images while retaining disease-relevant features needed for diagnosis. You may well be sceptical, but the team claim it's entirely possible to separate the two bits of info, leaving only crucial medical data but nothing personal on file. Coming up, a Japanese robot can now laugh at your jokes and why Patagonia is selling up for climate change. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? It's been claimed that some of William Shakespeare's plays may have been co-written with another author or authors after computer analysis was used to scan the Bard's works. 
Fresh examination of linguistic fingerprints apparently reveals plays including Titus Andronicus and Pericles may have been written by George Peel and George Wilkins. Speaking at the British Science Festival in Leicester, Professor Gabriel Egan from De Montfort University said his analysis suggests Shakespeare wrote 43 plays and co-authored a further 14 works. The billionaire owner of Patagonia, that's the outdoor wear company whose gilets are beloved by tech bros and bankers, has transferred the firm to a non-profit trust instead of selling up. Rock climber Yvonne Chouinard, along with his wife and two children, have transferred Patagonia, which is valued at about $3 billion, to ensure independence and that its $100 million annual profits are used to fight climate change. While the company continues to sell outdoor wear from its base in California, the Chouinards no longer own the company, but have ensured money generated can do some good. And finally, a robot has been taught to laugh at jokes in a bid to make it appear more human. Researchers at Kyoto University in Japan are using artificial intelligence to train the robots about what's being described as appropriate laughter and telling the difference between chuckles and belly laughs. It's all part of trying to make the droid, called Erica, empathise, and it was taught using a dialogue with real people to test the system. Creating a shared laughter model, the researchers used AI to help detect laughter, decide when to laugh, whether to laugh, and also what kind of laughter would be best. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for The Leader from the Evening Standard here in London and we'll be back on Friday at 1pm. See you then.